strange to say about just the place, but the place has its own energy, its own healing energy. It's like walking into a room and, and plugging in an electrical cord and lighting up. We light up, we open up, and as we, uh, uh, from the force of this energy, and as we open, we heal on many levels. And it's natural. It's just part of the earth. If you think about how we were as human beings thousands of years ago, we were able to see things with greater clarity. Uh, people used to see energy on the land, just like the Aborigines still do today. Uh, they call them the song lines because they literally treat these magnetic lines which cross the landscape everywhere in the world. Uh, in this room right now, for example, there's probably a magnetic line of energy, and even NASA knows about this. The human being has acupuncture meridian system. Acupuncture meridian system. The mother earth has the spider woman's web. So the vortex phenomenon is acupuncture points on the earth's surface. And so people have built temples, uh, pyramids, domes, etc. in places of power. And why do they build these structures? Because they want to draw that energy. Because energy is consciousness. The more energy you have, the more awake you become. The more you have higher mind functions available. And the more energy you have, the more power you have to control your space and ultimately the world. Because who has those buildings? The church and the state. So they, they've all had those buildings from pyramid states to uh, uh, the political and religious institutions. So you, you look at the life force and the, the energetic field of the Mother Earth as a living being. So it's not just the power of the land, it's also the spiritual guardians who are activating those places that people are making pilgrimage to. So it's more than just a, a physical phenomenon called a vortex. It's the living force of the whole Mother Earth and the spiritual powers that help govern the spiritual evolution here. So when the Aborigines are walking along the land and they hear the electromagnetic lines, they can turn on a dime and they can follow those song lines and they'll sing as they're walking because, because they treat them as cassette tape and cassette tape is also electromagnetic. It's got a, a ferric compound on which you engrave songs into it. Uh, they basically put imprint their energy along these lines so the next people that come along on the desert, they know where they are. And it's the same relationship that's been going on for thousands of years. We knew where these lines were and wherever these lines crossed, we marked them as a place called the altar which then became the altars of the churches and the Christian temples and the Celtic churches that were built on top of the old pagan sites. That's why they're called altars, they alter you. And it's well known that there's a positive charge that comes out of one of your hands and a negative charge that comes out of the other. So when you do this in the act of prayer, you're creating an electrical charge. So you, as an electromagnetic being, can sit on a specific point of the land and whether there's a church on it, a Gothic cathedral, a pyramid, a Stonehenge, a crop circle, whether those, or you want to sit on one of these or not, uh, you can actually stand on these points on the Earth's surface and alter yourself. place where the spirit comes. Uh, that's why they can't just do a ceremony any place. It has to be a spot. It's very secret because that's what the spirit, that's the spirit's place. This place here has been used for many, many years. This is one of the special Mayan altar here. The volcano, it's secret um, because it's been like 85,000 years since the volcano created the lake and also the volcano that's the heat because it's a fire and we call it the grandfather fire the volcano and that's why it's secret because when a medicine man or a medicine woman or a Mayan priest when they do the ceremony they always like um, calling the spirit of the volcano all the nature because it's very important gives us life and they're living too that's what it's secret to us
usually in a power place or sacred place, the three worlds are represented, the underworld, the earth world, and the spirit world. And we can see here, the underworld is highly honored. The spirit world, represented by those angels up there, is the ascension of the soul. And the fierce looking animals represent uh, the underworld. And the earth world would be represented by these uh, beings on either side that are guarding, guarding the tomb. Warm sun, calm water, gentle wind, lush vegetation, those are the elements that we're trying to control in feng shui. The modern definition would be the optimization of the energy flow within the space so that the occupants will thrive and prosper. We're standing at the entrance of the home, so the door is the mouth of the beam. And it's important to have an appropriately sized door. It needs to be just the right size. If it's too small, the energy doesn't enter the home adequately. And if it's too big, you get too much energy. So well, this is pretty much a well-balanced door for this house. But well, we have an alignment between the front door and the living room door, so the chi will tend to come in here, funnel, and go down the stairs. So in order to fix that, one of the things we could do would be to put a, some sort of a fabric, a tapestry that has some red in it up there, and that will act like a visual stop, and the chi has a chance to spread around. But an example might be, you move into a house and the first thing you know, I need a job, I need some money. So you, you focus on the so-called altars of financial and career. And then maybe later on you, you've got a good job, you're feeling okay, and you say, well, it'd be nice if I had a partner. So now you might change the energy flow so it would accelerate and uh, enhance the relationship area of your space to attract the partner. So the medicine wheel is a representation of sacred space. Thank you.